We just wanted to show you guys this view quickly. We just gained 3,000 feet of elevation today, and we just wanted to show you this view quick, okay? <laughs> All right, so it's Tuesday, September 15th so far. We've been doing a lot of walking, and we actually have pretty much, we're on the last day of food for what we were planning for this little spike out. So we've worked up the main drainage, we've come over here on the way out, worked this hillside, found a bunch of sign, just can't find any bugling bulls or anything. And we actually uh, bumped that glorified spike uh, that we didn't get on video. So we camped out here to, uh, last night, and uh, just got everything packed up. We're, we got a two, like a two mile hike out of here as the crow flies. And there's like some lower country, some flatter bottom ground. So we'll see, my thought is, is if it really snowed that much, the elk might have moved down, but everybody says that shouldn't be the case. But I still think that cows have every reason it seems anymore to go low. So I'm gonna go down there, see if we can get anything spiked up. If not, we're gonna be back at the truck and then we're gonna go to a totally different mountain. So, gotta hike out of here and see what we can get into. down there like a like a chunk of private that we're not sure if he's like hanging out around which would make sense but we're just gonna follow these tracks out down through here the only problem is, is we're dang near out of water hunter's pretty much out of water so it'd be killer if we could find some water if you're wondering why i'm sweaty and I'm dying of breath. We had to leave that bull. It was bugling around on the other side of this. We had to go all the way down to find water because we were clean out. So we had to drop this whole mountainside to get to water. And now we're pretty much at the top. So if you ever want to get a sense on how far you've climbed, just look at the other ridge.
sneaking up. I'm gonna keep this bull talking. See if we can get some footage of the bugle at least. <laughs> trying to sneak in closer and Hunter just bugles up there to challenge that bull and he's like pretty close to that bull so hopefully we can hear a gunshot here hopefully come on it sounds like he's got the wind he's in the right spot for the wind too the bull I think is above him so we played perfect the bull should not should not try to like run away wouldn't think he's been bugling at me for 25 plus minutes all right, so we just packed up camp for the morning. We ripped one bugle and haven't heard anything. Last night, I don't think we ever updated you guys, but we ended up getting on that herd bull, and it was really tough because there's some private land. We couldn't get the wind totally right. Had to wait for it to keep going more downhill, and he was kind of right on the edge, probably 100 yards in from the private, the private land. So we were finally able to get up to the the ridge and locate him like really pinpoint him and get below him get the wind mostly right it was swirling quite a bit set up and called and he was just hammering every bugle trevor made i i went down a little bit closer in case he went downwind and trevor stayed up on the main ridge we were like 100 yards from him and he was just ripping back and forth nothing he, he wouldn't give finally a spike comes in and I noticed it walking the ridge line in, and Trevor had no idea it was even coming because he couldn't see up the ridge. And I keep telling him, like, there's an elk right there. And I thought it was a spike, which is legal. And finally, I think Trevor noticed it, and it, anyway, it spooked eventually, and ended up coming, it was gonna come down towards me, and it finally went to an opening for Trevor. He raised it to try to shoot it, and his bag hit the tree or got, got caught, caught in the limbs yeah. and uh, spooked it. So, anyway, he ran away. And then, like, basically right after that, we realized that the bull wasn't coming. He was a herd bull. He must have had cows. And I ended up sneaking in closer, and I got to within probably 50 yards of him a couple different times and just never could see him. All he would have had to do was just walk left and right, but uh, he just wouldn't budge. And finally, they went down over the hill. They probably went down to get some water, so. And then when we were trying to find a campsite, <laughs> we ran into that spike again and couldn't get a shot at him again. And found a mule deer buck. Yeah, and a mule deer buck, <laughs> which was, it was too dark for me it was to just too, I have a tag. Yeah, it was just too dark. It was a little forked horn dink. So, yesterday was a good a good day. Yesterday was a day. So, hopefully, uh, we follow up with the shot fire today. Yeah. We should be back on him, hopefully.
unfortunately we just found out why that bull is no longer here because that guy drove up here probably in the dark this morning and they were down here feeding and it probably blew them out or just shut them up and they're just hiding so <sighs> is when you get close to them it's the problem with them being so dang low is then you have more people to compete with so the plan is now is we're gonna we haven't gotten anything to bugle we're gonna head back to the truck as fast as we can because we're out of food we've actually had to scrounge what we had left over I have a bunch of leftover tuna that I'm just not in the mood to eat so I'm gonna go back to the truck and regroup put new clothes on pack up more food and then go to a different mountain and hopefully there's elk there so it's the same it's the same hill that hunter saw 100 elk in uh, in July so he's got high hopes <laughs> Really, we've just been warming up. I've just been saving that spot. I'm trying to <laughs> trying to get him to work his legs a little bit. <laughs> we were walking up the hill. There's a mule deer. I thought he said elk, and so we were I both. Buck, buck, buck. Oh, so they started running before we could get on him, and so then I just ran after him because I've learned that mule deer don't run very far before they stop. <laughs> and so I followed him, and I ran into him, and I saw him again. They were like probably 80 yards, and I saw the one, and I couldn't tell if it was like a buck or not. And so I stood there and watched it for a while, and I finally figured out it was a spike. Yeah, it was a spike and a. Yeah, I finally thing. figured out it was a spike. And I'm like, do I shoot a spike or not? So I asked Connor, and by the time I asked Connor, <laughs> he starts moving off, because I didn't want to shoot a spike if the, the other dink was around. The bigger so dink. I started following him again, and I saw the, the bigger dink, yeah. and I couldn't get a shot. It was too brushy, and then they, they took off. So I was like, dang it. Gosh, me and Spike's just like going a long ways today. Can we go run into more? Maybe. I guess we should update you. We ended up moving to a totally different mountain and uh, it took us a while because we took uh, took baths in the creek because we reeked. And uh, we also hiked out like two and a half yeah, miles. Yeah, we, we also hiked out like two and a half miles, so it was a long ways. So we took a bath and then we got gear ready. And by the time we got gear ready, we left uh, the new trailhead at like what was it three o'clock and we met some hunters on the way up they were going down and of course they haven't heard any vehicles they haven't seen anything so we uh made a plan since we've been seeing elk relatively lower um we just kind of veered off pretty early and we actually ran, we bumped into more elk so they're not talking but we did find more elk so unfortunately there's really nothing you can do. I mean, every time we bump elk, I'm able to stop them, but by the time I stop them, they're already out of sight and they'll probably start walking. So it's just really hard when they're not talking and we can't figure out where they are or, you know, put a better play on them. We're just pretty much spooking them and then stopping them and never getting a shot at them. So we're gonna keep moving. There's a bench this way that we've been targeting, trying to get to. And we like this spot because this is the same hill that Hunter came in here and saw a bunch of elk in July. And I like this spot because in the bottom there's a ranch that has hay. And elk are just like cows. They have four stomachs. <laughs> they are lazy. <laughs> they will eat hay. So I'm thinking this is not a bad plan. But we need to elk to cooperate and to bugle a little bit. So. We'll keep hunting and see if we can get anything.
it's getting to be the end of the day and we found a nice flat spot. This is this was our target. I think it could be a feeding area, a lot of aspens. And this place is just huge timber, so there's not a lot of feeding areas. So we're gonna set up by it, do some calling, have no get any response. So we're probably just set up till dark because all we do when we walk around is just spook stuff, so there's more rubs around, we've just been using our We've just been just focusing on the hot sign and we've been in an elk. We just can't find any that want to talk. We've only heard one elk and that was the one last night that will make any sort of noise. But we'll see if anything comes in. Bob, 30 seconds later, clip. Oh, yeah. So, I stopped and I sat down because I wanted to drink water. Because <laughs> <laughs> I sat down and fell down the hill. <laughs> I haven't had, like, any water today. There's none up there. I mean, we have set some. Nowhere near the recommended daily allotment. We've been boiling water. Yeah, we've been, we've been boiling snow. snow. Melting snow because there was no, there's been no water. Hmm? What do you think?